गुड इवनिंग सर So in two minutes, we are starting with the chapter. Sir, so today which part we have? Today we will start. We will do chemistry, atoms, and molecules. Okay. So one doubt actually I was absent in the last class. So do I know what happened in the last class? Yeah. Probably in the last class we studied about tissues. Okay, sir. So let's start with atoms and molecules. In the last class, okay, you are the only one. Just wait for another two minutes so the time joins. हजारों हजारों सुखद परिस्थितियां आई गुड इवनिंग सर या गुड इवनिंग जितेंद्र गुड इवनिंग संपर्क जस्ट वन मिनट वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद वन मिनट वी आर स्टार्टिंग so in the last class we had done uh, law of chemical combination we had done the law of conservation of mass and the law of constant proportion
Okay, so let's continue here about atoms and molecules. And all of you just be quick in joining the class. Okay, join your class quickly. Your class will also end quickly. Also be responsive during the class. So that it seems, yes, that you people are attending. It's not that you have people turned on, logged in, and then busy somewhere else. OK, so keep your camera on so that it looks you are responsive. You are there. If I ask you anything, I get a response from you. So it should happen that, yes, I'm getting a response. Okay, let's see. So, laws of chemical combination. We have done the law of conservation of mass. So, can anyone state the law of conservation of mass? Some uh, chemical compound will remain in Law of conservation of mass. Okay. Harshet, can you state law of conservation of mass? Sir, it's okay, Jitendra, is it possible for you to state the law of conservation of mass? Sir. Yes. Sharvan, can you state the law of conservation of mass? Sir, I don't know the definition, but I know the formula. Okay, so what is the formula? Sir, is it M1 U1 plus M2 U2 equal to... Okay, okay, what, M1 what, what, okay what quantity do we get by multiplying mass with velocity? M multiply U. What quantity do we get? Mass with? Velocity, that is what you are saying, m1, u1. So that's momentum, right? Yeah, so what what, uh, what quantity you are talking of now? What we are talking of now? Momentum. No. Pay attention, we are me? talking of conservation of mass. So, oh, I heard conservation of momentum. Okay, so in a chemical reaction, In, in a chemical reaction, the sum of masses of reactants, or you can say like this, in a chemical reaction, the mass of the system is conserved. And See, what does it mean? That whatever mass of the reactant you use, the same mass of the product you get. Okay, we did one question also based on it. Law of conservation of mass. Okay, so law of conservation of mass means if you have some amount of masses, so the reactants, the mass of the reactants, it combines together to give the mass of the product. Got it? So, whatever mass of the reactant will be used, the same amount of the product will be formed. So, in this way, you can say that the mass is conserved. The mass remains constant. It's not that mass you are using up continuously. Okay. So, the mass is conserved in this process. Okay. We did one of the questions based on it. Okay. I'll just show you that question once more. What is law of conservation of mass state? So uh, this was the question which we did about the law of conservation of mass. I hope everyone remembers this. In a reaction, 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate, this question. So we did this question where we find out that yes, law of conservation of mass is followed. And as per the law of conservation of mass, we have seen. 
here it's given in a reaction you have 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate reacted with 6 gram of acetic acid so first we try to write down the reaction in words only we are not using anything else so we are just using the words so in terms of words i get sodium carbonate so it says that you have sodium carbonate combines with or react with acetic acid to give us here we obtain the product as carbon dioxide water and sodium acetate so we obtain here carbon dioxide Sorry. Yeah. Nothing, sir. Yeah, it's carbon dioxide, water, and sodium acetate. Salu for by. So sodium acetate. These are the three things which are formed. Now see their quantities are also given. What is the quantity of sodium acetate that is formed? The quantity of water that is formed and the quantity of carbon dioxide that is formed. Okay. Okay. So see, if we write down everything, so sodium carbonate, it is present, we take we have taken 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate and acetic acid we have taken as 6 gram and the products that we obtain here we obtain carbon dioxide as 2.2 gram we obtain water as 0 0.9 gram and we obtain sodium acetate as 8.2 gram so if you observe, if you add up the masses of the reactants and the masses of the product, so for the reactants, you get the total mass of the sum of these masses to be equal to 11.3 gram. And on the reactant side, if you add up all the masses, so you get again 11.3 gram. So we say here that the law of conservation of mass is being followed. I hope everyone has understood about the law of conservation of mass. Can you repeat it again, yes, sir? Which one? The question or the definition? Sir, the question. The question was? Like how to do it. Yeah. So first of all, if we read the question, then we write the reaction. So from here we get, see, you have 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate reacted with 6 gram of acetic acid. So we have written the reactants here. We wrote the reactants. Our acetic, uh, sodium carbonate we have written. We have also written acetic acid. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, sodium carbonate and acetic acid, they combine together to form, they both combine together to form carbon dioxide, water, and sodium acetate. These are the three products we are formed. So, after this, it said the products were 2.2 gram of carbon dioxide. 0 0.9 gram of water and 8.2 gram of sodium acetate. So that means if you add all the products, all the products are carbon dioxide, water, sodium acetate. So if you add up all of them, you get 11.3 gram. Got it? Okay, sir. Okay. So the mass of the reactant is equal to the mass of the product. Another thing we can see like this. Suppose we have This one. We have four gram of hydrogen combines with thirty two gram of oxygen. So, we have to tell 
according to law of conservation of mass how much product should be formed okay or how much of water should be formed there yes so can you tell how much amount of water will be formed can anyone sir, tell should, sir so should we divide it 32 by 4 okay can you write down the reaction in the form of words what is happening here no. yeah try to write down in the form of reaction okay sir So, 36 grams of water will be formed. Yes, 36 grams of water will be formed. So, you will write it like this. It says you have hydrogen. Then, hydrogen combines with oxygen. The products that you obtain is, you obtain water, which is the quantity you have to determine. So, hydrogen is 4 grams. Oxygen is 32 gram, and now you have to state that how much gram of water is formed. So, amount of water formed since the mass of the product should be equal to the mass of the reactant. So, here you should have formation of 36 gram of water. Got it? Yes, yes, sir. Let's see one, yeah, let's see one more question. If 12 gram of carbon reacts with, sir, yes, sir, uh, so uh, this law of conservation of mass applies for each and every reaction. Pardon, what you are saying? So this conservation of mass law will like, apply to every uh, reaction and every reaction it can be applied. Yeah, see, see, in every reaction it will be applied. Conservation of mass means you are not, uh, your mass is not going anywhere. Okay, your mass remains the same. Your mass doesn't change. So whatever is the mass, the same mass will remain available. If you are using 4 gram of hydrogen and 32 gram of oxygen, so you will be getting 36 gram of water. I can explain how. Okay. Yeah? So can you explain how? How? How means the total mass of the sea? As per this statement, it states that the there will not be any loss of mass or gain of mass. Okay. So like if you have 6 gram of carbon, so 12 gram of carbon I am having, and it combines with 16 gram of oxygen. Okay. So as per the conservation of mass, so the mass should not go anywhere. The mass should remain as it is. Okay. So here, whatever quantity or whatever product will be formed, the mass of the product should be 12 plus 16. That is 28 gram. Whatever product is formed, its mass should be 28 gram because there cannot be any loss of mass or gain of mass during the reaction. Understood, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. The next thing, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So the next thing we had done is law of constant proportions. So the law of constant proportions, it states that a chemical compound, it always consists of atoms combined or elements combined in their fixed ratio by mass. So, compounds or molecules, it states that compounds or molecules consist of So compounds or molecules consist of
consists of equal amounts of compounds or molecules consist of equal amounts of so not equal mm -hmm. consist of elements combined in a fixed ratio by mass. So compounds or molecules, they consist of elements combined in a fixed ratio by mass. So whenever the elements combine to form their elements, uh, to form their molecules, they always do so in a fixed ratio by mass. So we can say it like this, or a statement we can write that molecules, or we can say elements, always combine Elements always combine in a fixed ratio by mass. So compounds or molecules consist of elements which combine in a fixed ratio by mass, or we can say elements always combine in a fixed ratio by mass to form compounds. So see any compound or any molecule you consider it always cons it always consists of elements combined in fixed ratio by mass. For example, if I consider water, so what it means simply that water always consists of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, always combined in a fixed ratio by mass. So what is that fixed ratio by mass? Hydrogen is always two grams. So hydrogen remains as two grams and oxygen will be present as 16 grams. So their ratio will always be one ratio eight. So from wherever you find out water, if you take out any amount of water, for example, suppose uh, you consider here 36 gram of water. So in that 36 gram of water, it always contain hydrogen and oxygen in a fixed ratio. So here, Hydrogen will be present as a four part. There, if there are four parts or four grams of hydrogen, so there will be the remaining 30 grams, so 32 grams will be oxygen. For this, 32 grams would be oxygen. Understood what we are talking of? So if yes, you find sir. water, water will always consist of Hydrogen and oxygen combined. So, how you got 32 grams? The ratio. See, the ratio of 4 ratio 32 should be equal to 1 ratio 8. Oh, okay. Okay, it should always have the ratio 1 ratio 8. So, you can find it by this. Okay. Okay. So can you find out the ratio in carbon dioxide? In what ratio are they combined? In what ratio are carbon and oxygen combined to form carbon dioxide? Sir, 3 to 8. Yeah. See, carbon, the mass of carbon is 12. So, there are 12 grams of carbon and 32 grams of oxygen. So, if you find of, find the ratio of 12 ratio 32, the ratio 12 ratio 32, it becomes 3 ratio 8. So, in carbon dioxide, oxygen and carbon, will, or carbon and oxygen will always be present in the ratio 3 ratio 8. Got it? Okay, so let's do 
this question if there is any question based on this okay see hydrogen and oxygen combine in the ratio of 1 ratio 8 see hydrogen and oxygen how do they combine in what ratio do they combine so 1 is 8 yeah, one is ratio eight. Hydrogen and oxygen, they always combine in the ratio one ratio eight by mass to form water. What mass of oxygen gas would be required to react completely with three gram of hydrogen? Sir, 24, 24. grams. Yeah. 24 grams. 24 grams, yes. If you just need to find out the ratio, so the ratio is 1 ratio 8. You find out this. You write hydrogen and oxygen. They will be present in the ratio 1 ratio 8. Okay. And the ratio 1 ratio 8 should also be equal to 3 over x. Since hydrogen now is taken as 3, so oxygen will be x. And now we can uh, find out here. So x will be equal to 24 gram. Got it? Now we'll see the Dalton's postulates of the atomic theory. That means, how does Dalton describe an atom? So, first we will study Dalton's postulates of about an atom. As we had seen in the last class about an Indian person who has, who studied about, not studied, who was an Indian philosopher. And he gave his ideas on atoms. Can anyone name that person? He gave the idea of atoms. That is Anu and Parman. Yes, anyone? Sir Maharishi. Which one? Maharishi Kanat. Yeah, it was Maharishi Kanat. So Maharishi Kanat gave the idea of atoms or how do the atoms exist? So, atom exists as individual particles. These are individual particles of a matter which cannot be divided further. They are called as atoms. And every substance is made up of them only. So, see. Uh, these are the Dalton's postulates. So, John Dalton was the first chemist who studied about the atoms in detail. So he studied about them, whereas the Indian philosopher Maharshi Kanad, who did not study it, but he gave his philosophy, his idea about the atom. You see, according to Dalton's atomic theory, all matter, whether an element or a compound or a mixture, is composed of small particles called atoms. The postulates of this theory may be stated as follows. So you have to remember all the six postulates of the Dalton's atomic theorem. The six postulates of the Dalton atomic theory, which try to describe the atom. So see how the Dalton's postulate describe the atom. The first postulate states, that all matter is made up of very tiny particles called atoms, which participate in a chemical reaction. So in any chemical reaction, it is the atoms which participate in a chemical reaction. And they give rise to the formation of new substances, which we call compounds. You see? All matter is made up of very, very tiny particles called atoms, which participate in chemical reactions. Okay. So every matter, whatever you see around you, it is made up of atoms. Like it may be your table, chair, air that you breathe in, water that you drink, juices, whatever things you observe around you, all the things, they are made up of tiny particles, which are called as atoms. So how we concluded the presence of atom? We concluded it by, like if you go on dividing matter into smaller, smaller and smaller particles, so you will find that a stage will come where 
the matter will not divide further and that we call as the atom. The first point is clear to all of you, I hope. All matter is made up of very tiny particles. Yes, sir. Yes. So all matter is made up of very tiny particles called atoms, which participate in chemical reactions. The second point is, atoms are individual particles which cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So uh, this also we studied that, yes, Atoms are the particles which cannot be destroyed or which cannot be divided further. Like there are some particles which may be divided further, but atoms are the particles which cannot be divided further. So atoms are individual particles which cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So in a chemical reaction, atoms cannot be created, can neither be created nor be destroyed. Understood everyone? That atoms are indestructible and you also can't destroy them. So, just now we studied about the law of conservation of mass. So, do you think that law of conservation of mass is somewhat similar to the second statement? Yes. How many of you think that this yes, law of, Yes. Is it the same thing or different? Same, sir. Yeah, it's the same thing. It says that atom, atoms cannot be created or destroyed. So if atoms cannot be created or destroyed, so they must remain constant. Okay? So in that's the statement from the law of chemical, from the, uh, law of const, uh, conservation of mass. It simply means that by the conservation of mass, if you add up all the masses uh, in a reaction, it remains a constant. So, law of conservation of mass and Dalton's third postulate, they are all, uh, the Dalton's second postulate, they are same. The third point states that atoms of a given element are identical in mass and chemical properties. The atoms of any given element Atoms of a given element, they are identical in mass and chemical properties. So see, what does it mean? It, it means that if you are taking hydrogen atom, okay, atoms of a given element, they are identical. That means they can be called as pure. So they are identical in mass and chemical properties. So... Atoms can be written like this. You have your atoms of any given element. Suppose if you have atoms of carbon. Okay. So atoms of carbon, they will always be similar to each other. All the atoms of carbon, they should have a mass of 12 grams. They should have uh, 6 electrons. For combination, they should have 4 electrons. So all these chemical properties as well as physical properties, it remains there in, with all the atoms. So it is not that some atoms of carbon, they are, uh, they have different properties and some atoms of carbon, they have the same properties. It is not that. All the atoms of carbon, they have the same properties. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. So, can their masses will also be same. Okay. Then, atoms of different elements have different masses and chemical properties. So, if you take atoms of different elements, suppose I take one atom of hydrogen. So here I take one atom of hydrogen, one atom of hydrogen, and I take one atom of okay. one atom of oxygen. Okay. So I take one atom of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. 
So they are the atoms of different elements, hydrogen and oxygen. They are the atoms of different elements. So therefore, these atoms which are different of, uh, which are which belong to different elements. So these uh, these atoms they must have their different masses. Okay. So atoms of similar masses they are similar to each other, and atoms of different masses they are different from each other. Atoms of different elements, they are different from each other in their uh, properties. Okay, now see the fifth point. Atoms combine in the ratio of small whole numbers to form compounds. So that means whenever atoms combine, combine they always combine in a small whole number ratio. For example, water. Okay. So water is, okay, let's consider water. So water is considered to be, or water is our H2O. So wherever you find water, this water will consist of two atoms of hydrogen. You'll find two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen so wherever you take this uh, wherever you take this water it will always consist of hydrogen and oxygen in the same ratio so one atom of hydrogen and two atoms of oh, sorry two atoms of oxygen and one atom of hydrogen will always be present in it got it Okay, now see the last one. The relative number and kinds of atoms at constant are constant in a given compound. So for a given compound, the relative number of atoms is constant. So what does it mean? See? Now the last point. Let us take NaHCO3. So NaHCO3, I'll be fine with it. So NaHCO3 or sodium hydrogen carbonate, it consists of atoms as sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, right? And what are you? So how they are present? You have their presence of sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So in what what is the relative number? Sodium is there is one atom of sodium, one atom of hydrogen, one atom of carbon, and three atoms of oxygen. So the relative number of these, these atoms is a constant. In one molecule of sodium hydrogen carbonate, you will find one atom of sodium one atom of hydrogen, one atom of carbon, and three atoms of oxygen. If you have, uh, suppose I have five, mo five molecules, I have five molecules of NaHCO3. So five molecules of NaHCO3, that means you will have So, how many atoms of sodium will be there? Yes, can anyone guess? How many atoms of sodium will be there? Sharwan? How much? Five. Five. Okay, there will be five atoms of sodium. How many atoms of hydrogen will be there? Sir, five. Five, five sir. Okay, how many atoms of carbon will be there? 
पार्टिकल्स called atoms which participate in a chemical reaction so in a chemical reaction Yeah, just go through this uh, six statement. See the first statement: All matter is made of very tiny particles called atoms. which participate in chemical reactions so all matter everything around us is made up of very tiny particles the second point is atoms are individual particles which cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction so in a chem in a chemical reaction atoms cannot be created or destroyed atoms are individual particles which cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction this point has been taken from conservation of mass or it is the same as the conservation of mass the third point is at atoms of a given element are identical in mass and chemical properties so for any element the atoms of that atoms of the given element they are identical in mass and their chemical property atoms of different elements have different masses and chemical properties then atoms combine in the ratio of small whole numbers to form compounds like we see hydrogen and oxygen they always combine in the ratio 1 ratio 2 so 2 ratio 1 then fourth one is atoms of different elements have different masses and chemical properties so that is an identification of an element atoms combine in the ratio of small whole numbers to form compounds this is your law of constant proportions the relative number and kinds of atoms are constant in a given atom okay now see this one a uh, third question which postulate of dalton's atomic theory is the result of which possible is the result of the law of conservation of mass yes which point the second postulate which point the second postulate states that atoms are immovable particles and they neither can be created or destroyed in chemical reaction yes this is atoms are individual particles which cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction that is same as the law of conservation of mass then fourth point is which postulate 
of Dalton's atomic theory can explain the law of definite proportions. So I again show you all the six points and you have to state that which of them it is the same as the law of definite proportions. The, or it can explain the law of definite proportions. So here are the six postulates. Which of them can explain the law of so definite proportions? Uh, Atoms combine in the ratio of small whole numbers to form compounds, right? Yes, sir. Yes. To the fifth point, it can explain that. So the answer is point number five. Okay, the next one is we see what is an atom. So up to now, we have whatever we have done, that was just a preliminary of this chapter. A pre-part of this chapter, you can say, which you should be aware by studying this chapter or after you study this chapter. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I thought I'm not... Okay, Rayan? Rayan? Yes. Uh, are you getting everything? Yes, sir. So, now we get what is an atom? And we now assume, we'll try to see how big or small an atom is. Where all can we find an atom? Okay, so an atom it is just like a building block of matter. Building block of matter means all the matter is being constituted of the atoms. So just again the same similar example, like if you are big, if you observe a building, so that building is made up of tiny bricks. So it is actually small bricks which are joined together to form the building. In the same way, you have the atoms and those tiny atoms, they are joined together, they are combined together to form the substances that we see. So the substances that we see, they are formed by the combination of these atoms. Okay, So when these atoms combine in a fixed ratio, so these atoms, they combine to form their, uh, so atoms are just like a foundation of them, foundation of the substances. Whatever substances we see, those substances are made up of actually atoms. How big are atoms? So what could be the size of an atom? See, the size of atoms is very small. It can be of the order of a few nanometers. So how big or small a substance can be? Atomic sizes, they are generally measured in either nanometers or they are measured in even smaller units like angstroms. So atomic radius is measured in nanometer. One nanometer is equals to 10 to the power minus 9 meter or 10 to the power 9 meter. So it is. Or you can remember that one nanometer is equal to 10 to the power minus 9 meter. What it everyone? So your homework here now today is you have to see the symbols that were used for depicting these elements. So these are some of the symbols which were used for depicting the elements. So you see, hydrogen was depicted with the symbol, a circle and a dot. Then you have carbon, the way it was represented. So it was very tough to remember all these symbols. Okay, anyone having any doubts? Okay, bye all of you. See you again in next class and be prepared with whatever we have studied. Okay. Just go through it, check it what you have studied. Okay. Is there anything okay, your sir. points which you are not which you are missing? So complete that before your next class. Okay, bye all of you. Yes, Thank bye, you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir.